What is going on guys, Nipsey bringing you a VGC 2017 team builder guide. Now this guide isn't going to go crazy in depth with certain team strategies, combos, and cores. Basically this guide is going to tell you some common threats, some common niche mons, the essentials to have on your team, and basically things to look out for in the VGC 2017 meta. Um, if you want to see in-depth guides and in, uh, not just guys, in-depth teams and whatnot, EVs, particular stuff, there's gonna be a link down below to uh, my VGC twenty seventeen playlist. You can see a bunch of my team builds and stuff there. But for now, this guide is gonna be basically explaining common threats, common niche mons, the essentials, and um, basically that's it. And what that means exactly, we'll get into that as the video goes on. But first things first, let me get into the common threats or basically the so-called quote-unquote meta we have right now uh note this is not exactly everything you're gonna encounter and face there's just a lot of the common things i've seen on my time of battle spot local tournaments etc so on and so forth so first of all biggest threat right away we have trick room and none other than poor guy using trick room so we're gonna need a team that could function in trick room and also most likely outside of trick room as well so Porygon is a mess at this meta. He's using almost every other team, I would say. He's very good move set, move pool, I should say. He's very good mod in general, so bulky. Nothing's gonna oko it outside of like fighting Z moves and a very hard hitting stab uh, fighting move. But Porygon 2 is a common threat you have to deal with without a doubt when you want to build your VGC team. So keep in mind, when you're building a team, you want to have some kind of answer towards Porygon, Trick Room, or something to kill it in general. So that is the biggest threat I feel in the meta right now. The biggest thing you have to deal with or answer to in the meta right now. Next up, we have this co the combo of Tapu Fini and Arcanine. Uh, basically, to make a long story short, Fini's terrain says, Hey, you can't be status. Blah, blah, blah. And then it has Swagger, which says, Hey, man, you get confused, but you get 2 plus 2 attack. Then you go with Arcanine. Now, this Arcanine ain't right. Basically, what you want to do is Arcanine. This would be... Flare Blitz, this would be Wild Charge, and this would be whatever kind of coverage you want. For example, I don't know. Let's go with uh, let's go with Bulldoze. I don't know. Watch this example. Like I said, this is not this is not straight down. This is the law that said you gotta run. It's just an example of what you see common in the meadow. So basically, you would see Finny lead, Arcanine comes out. Ah, uh, you would swagger the Arcanine, give it plus two attack. Intimidate goes off. Lowers your points attack stats by one stage each. Uh, you honestly actually might have Snarl on this. You might, I don't know. But you might have Snarl on it, just lower your special attack or your opponents. So basically you got Arcanine lowering the attack of both your opponents' uh, mons. You could Snarl to lower both their special attacks. And then you have um, Wild Charges and Flare as your coverage of choice. Maybe you want to protect, but I think you do. And Finny just sits there. It has left his on it to never cover HP. You're going to Swagger Arcanine. Or you're going to swig whatever its partner is, give it plus two attack for free, and um, proceed to sweep things. Or kill your whole entire, your opponent's whole entire team. Now I'm saying it's always fitting Arcanine, but they both cover each other very well, and it's a great little um, combo, if you will. So that is another thing I look out for. Like I said, guys, this ain't going to be an in-depth guy, it's just going to be a guy to get you going, to get you on your feet, to enter the VGC 2017 meta. That's another thing you gotta watch out for. Then you gotta watch out for the speedy, the speedy lead, Faramosa and Laylee. Now what happens here? Faramosa is probably the fastest thing in the meta right now, but it isn't used too, too much. It's actually seen a peaky usage. I'll show you guys a nice little, it's gonna be a link down below, guys. I'll show you. It's gonna be this link here if you wanna read up on it. Um, this is an incredible, uh, incredible um, resource to use. It shows like the top 15 Pokemon used in January, and this is all them right here. But obviously, I'll link if you want to read more about that. I'll link it down below for you guys, and then um, yeah. So back to this, Faramosa Tapu Lele. Uh, Faramosa is very fast. Like I said, you've seen a little peak in usage, nothing too crazy just yet. But it's also really frail, so priority kind of bodies it. And then you got Lele. Lele, pretty decently fast, not the fastest thing in the world, but its ability prevents priority from going off. And then basically, with these two mods, maybe a scarf from the Lele. In terms of being fast and great coverage in general, for example, I have like protect, um, and have like protect ice beam for those guard chomps and things that we touch ice. You'd have poison jab because everything's with the poison this meta, and that's obviously an over exaggeration, but you get the point. Uh, poison jab, and then you're gonna have like high jump kick. Now I hate high jump kicking doubles, but I've seen it quite a lot. I can't justify running them myself, but high jump kick is the best 
fighting the tech, quote unquote, for Faramosa. But if they go for Protector, you mentioned they get about half your HP. But Faramosa lately, pretty solid lead. They they um do pretty good damage, and of course, no priority. You're gonna be going first. Obviously, Trickman's a good answer to that, but it's just another thing, like I said, you gotta look out for. So that is another common threat you're gonna see um in the meta. Next up, we have some more. Ah, uh, so we have Pelipper Golduck. We're gonna see Golduck is gonna have to swift some ability. Pelipper sets up the rain. Bada bing, bada boom. You get double speed on this. Pelipper also gets Tailwind. So you'd have Tailwind this guy to support the rest of the team. Uh, double their speed for three turns, basically. Pelipper speeds double through the swift swim. And then you, like, trap people. They go for protect. Boom, you encore them. Uh, you get Scald here. That's the set I like to run, like, Encore Scald. Ice Beam. I don't like Hydro because I miss it, but Hydro does allow you to get a better Waterium Z attack off there so uh, instead of being uh it's basically 40 points stronger than war terium z because scold is 80 hydro is 120 and then war terium z will be so the height 120 instead of the 80 but scold war terium z in the rain hits pretty hard enough in my opinion but that's just hearsay for now i, I guess that's more than definitely not trying to do that right now then we have some like little niche threats like uh snorlax with belly drum and mimikyu with trick room psych up for example, turn one, Snorlax will go for Belly Drum. Turn two, uh, turn one, Mimikyu goes for Trick Room. Now you're gonna be outspeeding everything. Psych up on the Snorlax, your own Snorlax. You got plus six, plus six on the field, and you're gonna Oko everything you verse. So that is a big threat. That's better in a best of one meta. But like my local is best two out of three. So in a best of one, Snorlax Mimikyu is really solid. If you can't, if you have no answer for that, like you can't fake out Mimikyu because it's freaking Ghost type. You force to fake out the Snorlax. And even then, you still get Trick Room up, and then, like, it's crazy, man. It's, it's actually a really good um, set, but it's definitely a lot worse in a best of two than it is in a best of one. So, that's basically a best of one thing you want to watch out for. And then we have um, a next that we get to see sometimes every now and then is the Double Dance. Faramosa with Quiver Dance, and then Oracorio. Uh, Faramosa will go for Quiver Dance, and of course, Oracorio's ability, the Dancer ability, says, Hey, man, if somebody uses the Dance Attack this turn, or Choreo automatically copies it. So, Faramosa with Quiver Dance, plus one, plus one, plus one. Or Choreo, plus one, plus one, plus one. Then Or Choreo gets to attack still, because it's an ability and not like an attack being used. So, Faramosa with Quiver Dance, Or Choreo with Quiver Dance, because of its ability. And then Or Choreo still attacks that turn at plus one, plus one, plus one. It's gonna freaking hurt, man. And it's mostly this one, because it's like a mini Zapdos. Um, Electric Flying is the best typing out of the four birds. You can run any other one you want, but this one gives you the best coverage, if you will. Or the best, like, type dual typing, I guess you could say, out of the four. Obviously, it's, uh, you can choose everyone you want, but this is the one you see more often. Double dance, it's annoying, it works. Um, uh, it's something you want to keep your toe, be on your toes for. You don't see it that often, but it is a threat you gotta watch out for. And then, um, you gotta watch out for. Another thing I have mentioned here is, uh, Ninetales, uh, Sand Slash. I feel like it's still done a little bit right now. I feel like a good player is going to pick it up one day and then, like, like destroy a tournament with it. But as of right now, it's not, it's like, I honestly feel like ice is the best weather. But nobody is utilizing it the right way just yet, including myself. We just got to figure out exactly how to run it in this meta. But, obviously, Snow Warning goes up. Nine Tails being really fast, one on base speed. It kills Guard Chomps. It has Encore. You're going to Encore things. It also has Aurora Veil. Vale. You're going to double your defensive for five turns. Um, and then Sand Slash obviously has Slush Rush. Double speed is basically, um... The ice version of Gold Duck, you double your speed in the hail, and then you do things like Iron Head Stab, Ice Crush Stab. Like, it's not bad. Uh, obviously, Fire is really good against it. Uh, with uh, Sensor being time story to both Steel and Fighting, I mean, to Fighting and I, uh, Fighting and Fire, excuse me. Uh, it's kind of hard to survive sometimes with it, but you are kind of bulky. You are going to live things that aren't Fire and Fighting. Um,. And obviously, if you have Nantes Roar Rail support, it's pretty damn solid. Encore, I love Encore. I don't like Roar Rail and doubles, but um, that's my own personal opinion. We're not trying to avoid that for right now. So those are common threats you're going to see outside of thing. And uh, um, oh, before I go on, I'm sorry, guys. There's also things like Talon you got to watch out for. Um, you you got to watch out for speed control attacks as well. I mentioned Talon on Pelipper, but um, Talon in general, things like Manda Buzz, Burviari. Uh, you got to watch out for Talon in general. It's a great, it's a great speed control. You got you to gotta have some kind of speed control on your team. But we'll get to that in a bit. So basically, guys, those are some common threats you got to keep in mind when you're building a team. So what are the essentials? What are the essentials, in my opinion? So we have 
I think, in my opinion, every team should either have Taunt, Fake Out, or Porygon 2 Killer. Now, I know I just said I get my opinion out of this, but I feel very strongly about this, and I feel Taunt, Fake Out, or a Porygon 2 Killer is essential to have. So, to start things off, hmm, I need a Pokemon with Taunt on my team to prevent Trick Room being set up because my team is weak to Trick Room. So let's do this. Make this VGC real quick. I apologize. There we go. So we need a Pokemon that has Taunt. What has Taunt in the VGC meta? And these all, all these mods come up right here. You're going to stop at where it says... Oh, we got quite, quite, we got quite a few. Look at that. I've been this, this list so many times. I don't know how many we had. But, um... Okay, we're going to stop right here in the Pheromosa. So, all these mons have Taunt on them. Now you got to pick out the good from the bad. Obviously, you don't want Rattata, Eradicate, Zubat, Golbat. Maybe you want Golbat, I doubt it. A little Persian's pretty solid. He gives you Taunt and Fake Out. I'd say Fake Out over Taunt on Persian, but that's just me. Um, So, you can have, basically, if you get a Persian on there. Uh, Alakazam, I feel like he's not going to see much use at all. You're not going to want to Taunt him. I mean, you can. It's cute. You can do it. It would be interesting to have Muck with Taunt on him, but uh, I don't think you really want that. You want a speedy Taunt user. Someone that can actually be the Trick Room user, Taunt it, and like try to basically survive. So for example, if you want to Taunt the Porygon, you don't want to use a Gyarados, because Porygon 2, if it's me playing against Porygon 2, um, with the Porygon 2 against a Gyarados, I'm going to say, oh, he wants to Taunt me, and if he doesn't even have Taunt, I'm still going to T-Bolt it, and that's going to do either kill it or put Gyarados in the red. So... You don't want a Gyarados up against a Porygon 2, so in this case, you want to taunt a Porygon 2, you want to taunt it with something like, not Aerodactyl, because Ice Beam t will destroy you. You want to taunt it with basically, I want to say, maybe a Tapu Koko, which is down below. Um, you can go Frostlass, very risky. This does indeed kill Garchomp, SP Garchomp, and um, give you taunt usage on your team. You can use Priority Taunt Whimsicott, which is pretty solid. Uh, taunt Krukadot, which is pretty good as well. Ice Beam is going to do that much to you even at plus one. Well, it's going to do a little bit to you at plus one. But it ain't, it ain't that threatening. Obviously, you're immune to T-Bolt. So, uh, Taunt Crocodile is pretty solid. Uh, Manda Buzz is even pretty solid. Because you're so damn bulky, you don't even care about being with the Thunder and Ice. Uh, don't worry about Talonflame at all. Um, so, in this example, let's just go with... Ooh, Salazzo. Is I used Taunt Salazzo on the team I won with. I loved it. I, I didn't even get to use it that much. But, man, it was just there. It was a nice little... Nice little thing to have. So you know what? For this example on our team, we're going to build together, guys. We're going to run Taunt on... Let's go with Salazzle. Salazzle will be our Taunt user. We're just going to put Taunt on him so we remember. Taunt, Salazzle. And being Poison Fire type is pretty damn solid. You kill all the Tapus. Uh, you hurt Celesteela for stab fire damage. You hurt any Steel Pokemon. You hurt any Pokemon that are weak to Poison. Salazzle, yes, it's very frail. But you have your friend Focus Sash over here to put in that work and survive for two turns instead of one. And Corrosion is going to be your um, ability of choice. I don't even know if you get Oblivious, but if it was up to me, I'd obviously, I'd obviously run Oblivious over Corrosion because I ain't going to be doing much of that Salazzo. He's going to be Protect, Taunt, Flamethrower, Sludge Bomb. But in our situation, we have our boy Salazzo as our Taunt user of choice. Boom. Here we go. Protect, Taunt, Flamethrower, and Sludge Bomb. There you go. That's going to be our first mod right there on our team. We're not going to go crazy with EVs and IVs or anything. Yeah, we're just going to make you the right nature. I would make him some kind of timid, but not fully invested. But that's just me. Uh, we have our timid Salazzo is going to be our Antitude Trick Room. Now, before I go on, there are also some little other threats I gotta, you got to worry about. A little mod to fulfill a certain role outside the common threats. And in my opinion, those mods are basically you have Gashadon, Milotic, Mandibuzz, Marak, Tokidamaru, and Muck. Basically, Gachadon kind of counters the rain teams with, with um, for example, pull it up. You got Gachadon, uh, who goes for um, Storm Drain. What the heck just happened? I saw the wrong. There we go. Gachadon with Storm Drain prevents any water attacks from being used at all. Any water attacks get sucked into him and boosts his special attacks. So, Pelipper Gold are completely useless for the most part, outside of Hurricane and Ice Beam. Uh, is a good answer for that. Um, we have something like Milotic. Who just is anti-intimidate with the ability competitive. If you lower his um, attack by one stage, this special attack gets plus two. So it gets really, really good. Um, we have Mandibuzz with Tenor, like I said previously. Then we have the Lightning Rod users in this meta. We got Marowak and um, Token Tomorrow. They're just there for Lightning Rod to suck in electric attacks. Outside of Discharge. And then we have basically Muck, another 
brawl filler, in my opinion. It just kills Tapus, survives, and bees annoying. Like, Muck kills all the Tapus, basically, outside of Finny in one shot with Poison Jab. You can go for Gunk Shot for bigger damage. But, um... Those are... You're gonna, like, want one of those mods, maybe, in your team. But, um... We'll get that to a bit. So, back to the essentials. I just, wanted to, I just wanted to throw that in there real quick to keep you guys, like... Um... Just to inform you guys about certain mods that will fulfill certain roles as you get more advanced with your team building. But like I said, it's going to be a basic video. Nothing too crazy just yet. There's a place down below for the crazy stuff if you want to check that out. So, um, we got Salazzle as our answer for Porygon 2 and basically, like, Trick Room in general. We taunt whoever it may be. The only problem is that Oranguru has inner focus, so you can't flinch it. And if it has a mental herb, you're guaranteed to get in trick him off. So, Oranguru is a problem for, like, taunt users as long as it's holding on a mental herb. But, um, and have an inner focus so it can't flinch. But other than that, Salazzle should be pretty good enough to answer to Trick Room. So next up, we are going to have, uh, another essential in my opinion. Anti-Weather Mond or a check to the weather. My favorite for sure is 100% Gigalith, um, with the Sand Stream ability. The Sand goes up, boost your Special Defense naturally because Rock Pokemon can get a boost in Special Defense from Sand. Obviously, if this is the case, I don't have a session on Salazzle. It would be more of an air balloon. We'll do one of those. And my personal favorite on Gigalith would be a weakness policy to make sure you do heavy damage when you need it. Because you're going to be living everything, basically, outside of, like, Grandinium Z, Garchomp. Um, but, uh, you would have something like that. And, for example, I said I would run on this bad boy. We protect. Hey. Protect. Rock Slide. Wide Guard. And Heavy Slam. This gives you an answer to the most top boost inside of Finny. Uh, this is not Rock Bless. This is Rock Slide. What the heck? This is supposed to be Rock Slide. Don't know how that happened there. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a great mon. It's very bulky. It's going to be living things the way, the way, uh, depending on how you EV it. Uh, Stab Rocks is always nice. Flinching is always nice. And it also functions in Trick Room. So in case Lazo fails its job for whatever reason, you do have a mod that can function in Trick Room. Uh, with a look at that. It's base 25 speed gain. It's going to be nothing. If you really want to function in Trick Room, you just do... Bada bing, bada boom, make one of those, and you can be going most likely first. But it's not essential to have 31 IVs or zero IVs. You can do whatever you want. 31 is good enough. You can be slow enough. That's fine. So basically, Gigalith is our anti weather. It prevents uh, things like uh, it prevents uh, the, the Pelipper Goldock. It prevents Nine Tails Sand Slash. Not so much the. I forgot to mention the threat as um, Torkoal and Lilligant. Like I said, guys, I, I'm not going to be covering everything. Remember, everything just the top, off the top of my head. But um, this it does answer against... Not really answer, but it does get rid of the the sun. Because I'm pretty sure Torkoal outs, is slower than uh, than the um, Gigalith. Yeah, he's five points slower. So if you really do want to make, make sure your send goes first, you would make your speed IV. This is going to be zero. You really can't outspeed it. Okay. So you can't do nothing. You'd be zero as well. And there's nothing you could do. Because you would be brave. And then you'd be, you'd be at 27. And Torque would be... Uh, Torque would be quiet. So there's no way you can outspeed it. If it's if you're both min speed, min, uh, min speed nature as well. So forget that. But basically you do... You can switch into Gigalith. Get rid of the sun. Make overheats do less damage. Get rid of uh, get rid of the little against uh, double speed in the chlorophyll and then the sun. Um, but basically, it's an anti weather answer. Not perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect team. I'd like everybody running it. But that's what I look for in my anti weather. I go for Gigalith most likely. Yes, I can't get rid of Torkoal for the most part, but I can negate both hail, rain, and uh, opposing sand, if you will, if you really want. Like, you want to get the sand. I don't know, you want sand back up, you're pulling the sand one away, I don't know. But basically, you get your, it's your answer towards hail and rain. That's what I got going on with that Giglyph. Uh Next up, another must-have on my on my team, in my opinion, is a... Um, uh, I put Trick Room Answer here, but that's basically covered by Taunt and Fake Out. I would say Fake Out's pretty damn solid to have on your team. And for example, Salazzo does get Fake Out as well now. So you can drop Taunt for Fake Out, or keep or keep around both. Have no Protect, just go Protect. I mean, just go Taunt to Fake Out. But I think a Fake Out user is good on your team. Um, and, uh, yeah. You want you want to have uh, answer the trick, obviously, like I just said. And that is our Salaz on this case. 
or you want to kill Porygon too, you could go for like something like Buzzwole. But that is that's that's a whole different thing. So let's just go back to the basics. And we have our answer trick and cover. We have our anti weather covered. We want some kind of speedy mod, so we'll some kind of speedy mod. It's essential to have on any team is some kind of fast mob. Um I would if it was me, I wouldn't do it just yet. I would probably choose one other like niche mod to cover everything. For example, like a muck. Let's just throw a muck on this team. Uh, Muck is also a great mod. It just kills the Tapus. Um, it has a Figgy Berry. It's brave. It functions in Trick Room. It functions outside of Trick Room. It's just a great mod in general to have. Let's just go with him for now as our last like little niche coverage mod. Protect, Poison Jab, uh, Knock Off, Shadow Sneaks, the Standard Muck. We'll do one of those. Eevees you can run as you want, but I would say Max HP, Max and Sack, Brave Nature. I don't want to get too in depth about EVs because I want you guys to your minds. I don't want you guys to just copy paste net that kind of thing. I want you guys to try to think for yourself a little bit what kind of EVs you want. But um, especially for Gigalith and Salazzle. Salazzle could be obviously Salazzle would be to just make it completely basic. You just do one of these. I want to do that, but that's, that's just completely basic. Gigalith is a whole different world. He's 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 gotta be EV based on the way you want him. But no matter what, you want to have max HP on him, and that is that is my opinion right there. So. That is your lucky little coverage mod, and now you definitely want to have some kind of speedy mod. And don't forget, we still got to have top boost and ultra beast, so... Um... I don't like overcrowding my teams with top boost and ultra beast, but... In this case, we probably will, just for argument, so I can make this video a little bit shorter, because I don't want to make it too long. So basically, uh, we want some kind of top boost, some kind of thing that got speed stuff. Uh, we don't have any electric coverage just yet, we have no fairy coverage just yet, we have no, um... Answer for a gash down on my Lodic just yet. So if it was me, I would put on a... Well, we do have an answer for the top of Bulu, but we want some kind of fast Mon right now. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Garchomp. Garchomp would suit this team pretty well, as this team is pretty weak to ground. We have three ground weaknesses right now. Um, so you want us some kind of like Levitator, we could have a Celesteel. Let's go with Celesteel. You are immune to EQ. You're pretty solid. Basically, you want Celestia to have lefties and run it as you want. You want substall, go for it. You want three attacks to protect, go for it. You want a physical, go for it. But basically, Celestia, um gets flamethrower, gets giga drain, gets uh, heavy slam, gets flash cannon, energy ball, EQ, autonomize. There's a lot going on, Celestia, and it obviously covers our grammy this here. So that's really nice to have. And then. You can have an Intimidate user, it's not necessary in my opinion, I don't really like Intimidate this much. As I don't think it's, it's like that important to have in this meta, it's always nice to have, but it's like, it's not essential in my opinion, it's just a nice little thing to have on your team. So um, I think the next thing we want to have here is a Garchomp answer, and in my opinion a good one is Scarf Tapu Lele. As you can tell we don't have any Tapus yet on this team, so let's go with Lele. Lele is going to have a Choice Scarf, and the set I like on Lele, I do like running Timid. But I'll leave you if you want to run a timid or mod. So we're going to have Energy Ball, Shadow Ball, uh, Dazzling Gleam as your Fairy Stab, and then we're going to have Psychic, of course, because Psychic is so damn strong in that terrain. I'm sorry, not with Dazzling Gleam, it's going to be Moonblast. Moonblast, Oko's Garchomp, born at Assault Fest, and huge investments. So that's going to kill your Garchomp for you. A lot of speed because of the Scarf, obviously. You could probably do something like this. Make you timid, you can run modest, but I like timid just to, I don't know, just to make sure I outspeed things that I want to, or or outspeed, or try to speed how the ladies that are timid. If not, they're modest, I outspeed them and get the shadow ball off, which is nice. But, um, so far as the team we got going on right now, guys, we got the lady to outspeed Garchomp, and I think killing Garchomp is a huge thing in this meta because Garchomp just kills everything with Grandinium Z, Poison Jab, Dragon Claw, and Earthquake, sometimes even Poisonium Z. It's killing everything in the meta for the most part in one shot. That isn't like that isn't that doesn't resist ground or stuff like that. Like is like, Gar is really good and like I'm not just saying that because he's freaking the most used mod as of January right now. I've literally looked at this after I started like writing down my ideas for this video. But it's basically what we got going on so far in this team. This kill our Lily kills Garchomp. Our Celestia covers the ground weakness. Um, Muck kills the Tapus. Your anti weather. You prevent Trick Room. And then last but not least, we want some kind of Mon that can, like, round this team out. So, we have a little bit of a weirdness between Gigalith and Salazzle. Anything to the world, though, because Muck, Celesteel, and Delay can deal with the Water Pokemon kind of well. Um, But this team might get a little wrecked right now by Golduck Pelipper. 
So what you want to do here is have some kind of answer for that, which would be either fake a fake out user to get around the gold duck, or in this case you can just give it basic. This ain't a sure set solid answer, but Sapu Coco can indeed threaten the hell out of both of them with discharge. Obviously you're gonna be outsped from the gold duck in the rain, and you could be Oko by War Team Z, so you gotta watch out for that. But um if you really want some kind of Pokemon that could like get around uh, the uh, the uh, what do you call it? the the gold the, the gold duck and this gigantic speed stat when it was in the rain, you can run Fake at Alolan and Raichu. We got that right there. Who's legal this, uh, this generation? Um, what else do we got? We got Magnezone. He will live most likely. He should live a Warterium Z because he's pretty damn bulky. He's got 90 base defense, 110 defense. He should be living. Waterium Z and then Revenge Killer with a Discharge, a T Bolt, something like that. Um, Vikavolt, if you have Trick Room up, you're not gonna obviously have to worry about um, the Gold Duck too much, gonna be out spinning because Trick Room is up. But Vikavolt's a nice little monster to have, T Bolt could kill it. Toka tomorrow could fake out and then kill it. Zerkatry, I wouldn't recommend because Coco does Zerkatry's job better in every way, in my opinion. Um, and then that's basically that. So in this case, let's go with. And if that's not actually working for you, you could also look at Pokemon that learn like Thunderbolts. See, so, like Pokemon that are that could just run Thunderbolt for you and take a water attack. For example, like if you want to get really crazy, you could put like T Bolt on I don't know like a Starmie. So you resist water, you T Bolt the Pelipper, you T Bolt the the Golduck. You're gonna bring down the Pelipper to the Sash, or maybe even kill it if it's not Sash. You're gonna kill Golduck maybe. I don't know. Porygon too, you could have on your team to T Bolt them as well. You're gonna be living water attacks all day. And uh, you recover as well, so uh, you can run that, which is very... I wouldn't put it on this team, which is the option for other teams in the future. Like I said, Mazum's pretty solid. Uh, you can be living at sacks. But uh, just that initial threat. You want to do something that Pelipper Golducks. This, this team is kind of weak to that. And you want just some kind of answer to it. I'm just going to put Tapu Koko here because... Yeah. Because we're, we're going to go Tapu Koko. Yes, we do get Oko by Warterium Z, but we can obviously protect turn 1, take 25% damage, and then from there, like, figure out what to do. Koko isn't a short set answer. Like I said, guys, this is like a very basic team. It's a little rundown. Things to think about. Um, in VGC 2017 meta. Uh, if you want to see more advanced, like I said, there's, there's, there's a link down below to my VGC playlists. And basically, we'll wrap up this video. Like I said, guys, nothing too crazy. It's just a nice little video to have for you guys to explain common threats, common niche mods, and what you, be, what you should be thinking about when you're making a team. In no way is this team amazing. In no way is this team completely superior, superior, superior or like viable. It's just a cute little team to get your feet wet and figure out like synergy. Like I said, Celesteela covers the ground weakness. You are anti-weather. You prevent... Um, you prevent um, Trick Room and stuff, you're really fast as well. Muck kills like half the meta in one shot. Um, that's obviously no exaggeration, but Muck is just really good. Lady is your Garchomp answer. Uh, Coco is your little War Reaches and Golduck Pelipper answer, sort of, kind of, not really. But um, we also have Scarf and Laylee, who probably gets around. He might get around the uh, Golduck, I'm not entirely sure. Because Golduck's speed would go to like. I don't know, you guys can do the math there, but you do have some answers here for the Golduck Pelipper lead. Uh, obviously, I think I'd probably go Celesteela and Mock keep Coco in the back against that lead, but that's just me, guys. I hope this video was helpful. Like I said, it wasn't exactly in depth. It's a basic little video to get your feet wet. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments down below. Show yourself to that like button. And uh, also, be sure to subscribe as well so you don't miss out any competitive Sun Moon content on my channel, guys. If this guide helped you, please let me know in the comments down below and show some love that like button. I want to know what you guys are thinking about this guide. And if I missed anything or anything better, let me know as well. Uh, just keep in mind this was a basic rough guide, nothing too insane, nothing anything crazy. So with that being said, guys, 